Hey, Tony from Bikeberry here. It's good to see you. So today is a really big day. We're going to compare the 49cc four-stroke to the well-loved bullet train. Let's roll. Let's start things off right by walking around each bike and just talking about the details of what makes them such good cruisers for your everyday riding. You could see that I mounted our awesome 49cc four-stroke engine into our rock-solid Switz Cruise bike frame. This frame has been updated with uh, many new things. Most notably is the rims on it are more true than the previous model. There's flat sides so that you can put caliper brakes on. You can see I put it on the front because I, I needed a good solid stopping power. They're nice and quiet. They work really well. Uh, it's awesome. Other than that, I added uh, shorter handlebars than the ones that came with it because I just didn't really want the big wide ones on this I wanted it a little more lean and mean looking other than that uh, It's a pretty stock bike. The one thing I did do on here is it has the extended uh, Crank system. I chose to put the straight pedal crank on this side So I ground off a sprocket from from here and then put this back on with the one that was bent out, it didn't really need to be because I've extended it. Uh, it made pedaling really hard. So now it pedals really easy. On this side, I do need to paint it black by the way, but this side I have the one that's contoured out so that it goes around the engine. Pedaling is effortless. But as you can see, the four strokes, they have a centrifugal clutch, meaning you just roll the throttle back and you go. A lot of people like that for cruising just because it's a, a nice simple way to get the bike going. You know, traditionally on the two strokes, you have a clutch lever, but this one's just your front brake. Uh, so there's no clutch lever on here. You just roll the throttle back and you go zooming. Next up is the BT80. This is a well-loved engine. Lots and lots of people have used it over the years with great reliability. It's a pull start and electric start so you could do either or with it you can see that the battery is down here uh, it's a centrifugal clutch so there's no clutch lever or anything to get it going you just roll the throttle back just like the four stroke and you get cruising uh, the thing i like about this bike is that it feels like a little bit higher level i don't know if i want to say luxury but with the electric start on it where you just push you know you have it on and off and then you just push the start here. Uh, it just has this kind of nice, uh, you know, higher end feel to it. Now this is a frame from the site where it comes with this tank. I had to modify it, fit this bigger engine. So I had to cut that bar completely out and rebuild it. So this bike is built pretty much from the ground up, but you could mount this into anything that you have. Uh, I just wanted that utilitarian kind of military style, you know, old school look. Something that I did differently on this bike was to put the tensioner on the pedal chain. I thought, well, if I want consistent tension on the chain, I might as well pull it back and make this exact length I need. And then even as it stretches, I can pull it back and adjust it. I figure since this chain doesn't get the same heavy duty use that the drive chain does, why not make it what gets adjusted versus your drive chain? Now that I've been using it for a while, I'm definitely thinking of doing it on the other bikes. One final thing is I have an HP carb on here, which has performed flawlessly. Pretty much every time you choke it and it'll start right away. So I'm loving the HP carb on the BT80. But that's enough about the bikes. You're here to see which engine is right for you and your performance needs. Next up is the half mile stretch test. So this is the road from my house to the main road. It's got good flats, got good hills, got good uh, you know areas to really test an engine's performance and a bike's performance. So as a cruiser, this one is uh, very torquey in the bottom end. Like you can almost take off from a dead stop. It's torquey enough it can do it. As it climbs the hills, I noticed that uh, you can lean into it, really give it some throttle, and it powers right up them. Now, on the flats, you can uh, give it kind of all you got. Now, granted, I haven't really tuned, fine-tuned the carburetor on this. It's a pretty new engine, so I'm breaking it in, and it keeps changing on me a little bit. But overall, you'll get the point. 
But one thing I do notice on it is the flat sections where I'm giving it all the throttle, it, and it just can't give me any more. It just tops out. You know, you can just feel it top out. Uh, then when you go on a decline like this, even a slight one like that one is, you can feel the bike is almost going faster than what the engine is pushing the bike to go. So you kind of get this weird, um, almost like the clutch isn't engaged and the engine is winding out. Uh, so it's a little more finicky going downhill than it is uphill. Again, that bottom end torque, not as much top end, uh, makes for those situations kind of weird. So you just have to back off the throttle, let it kind of roll down the hill, and then give it throttle when you're going back up the hill. Then as I, you know, again, go on the straightaway, I give it all I got, it, uh, it does really well. Again, not as much top end performance as a two stroke, but it's not gonna be. Let's review a downhill ride again. So you can hear the engine winding out, like the momentum of the bike is faster than the engine can push it. So it kind of acts kind of crazy. So I think rolling off the throttle on the downhill and then giving it throttle as soon as you hit the bottom of it to go climb back up. Then I think you'll be totally fine. You'll get what I mean because uh, it has plenty of torque to handle pretty much any hill that you throw at it. Let's see how the BT-80 does. Now right away it starts up and it takes off kind of like a rocket. Uh, it does have a decent amount of bottom end torque. Now I have the HP carb on here so you choke it and then you roll back the throttle and then it's game on it rockets right away uh and it's fast as you can see the some of the footage is shaky here that's literally because it just zooms so fast so speed is your thing vt80 is your cruising machine <laughs> it's amazing uh i would even say it's got decent torque now it's not going to take off from a dead stop you do have to pedal it to get it going um, but once you're going with the momentum that you carry with this engine, it will rock it up pretty much most hills that are, I would say, average. If you have really steep ones, then probably not. You're probably going to be better off with the four stroke. But you can see from the footage how shaky it is. Uh, it's like a rocket. I'm always impressed with uh, how rock solid of an engine it is, how strong of an engine it is that it is pretty fast for what it is <laughs> i don't have a speedometer on this bike so i don't know the exact speed that i'm going but i would say it's well over 10 miles an hour faster than the four stroke uh, i just feel like this one offers so much in the package that it's in it's just a really good engine So here's some side-by-side -side footage of me and my son cruising along down the roads and he could easily pull ahead of me with the power of the BT-80. Now, otherwise, they're very good comparable bikes to go cruising together on. You can both really take on the same terrain. Uh, you can, you know, climb the hills the same and all that, but I would say the biggest difference is, is the BT-80 could take the four-stroke any day, which Everybody knows, but this is a good example of that. He, I couldn't keep up with him here. All right, all right. What is the verdict between the BT-80 and the 49cc four-stroke engine back there? Well, the BT-80 has great top end, great gas mileage. It has electric start and a pull start. Uh, it doesn't have as much torque as the four-stroke, but it's pretty close. You do have to pedal it to get going. Uh, but it's just an overall really great engine that has really proven itself. Now, the four-stroke back there, uh, my feelings on it is it's just scrappy. <laughs> it's got a lot of low-end torque, and it's just kind of scrappy. So I think if you have a little rougher terrain, maybe more gravel roads, maybe you're riding around in pasture kind of area, or using it in a, you know, a more rough situation, it definitely would be your go-to. Uh, but they're both fun. I'm so glad I have both of them because, you know, me or, and someone else are out on a ride. 
Uh, they're just both really comparable engines. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are, if you have either one of these engines or if you have both and what you think of them. I would love to hear it. Also, would you like me to hook up speedometers to these things and do some speed tests with it? And then any other data type tests. I didn't do data type tests on purpose in this video because I really wanted to uh, just, you know, how does it feel? How does it perform on the street in real world ways? But I think data is important. So that's the next video that I'll create with these two. What would you like to know as far as data, top speed, uh, acceleration time, etc.? Let me know. Let's roll.